Woke up this morning, thing I'm about to go some of the day. Best friend got caught up when I stayed in Douglasville. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. One of my legends that I consider a producer guy, Jay Dilla, on micro chopping technique. Um, I just want to show everybody my shirt. Shout out Malcolm X. Um, happy Women's Month, by the way. And yeah, you know, I, I'm one of those people where I believe in I shouldn't post my girl. I should treat her out, show her that how much I care about her. Same with mom. Same with my sister, my niece, you know, like treat them out, call them, tell them I love them. And like, I appreciate them being my life. That's how I show my love for the women in my life. I was telling my girl, I don't need to pose you for all these people that don't really know you like that. So you could feel validated because if we break it down, I, it's society that you want to show that says I support you. But in the reality, you know I support you. You know I will pay for lunch. I'll pay for food and we'll go all the way to your house. Simple. You know? It's like, I love my girlfriend. I don't need to show y'all my girlfriend. Just know I love my girlfriend. My girlfriend understands that and I'm so happy. I'm so happy I have a girlfriend that understands me. And I'm so happy my girl. I understand my girlfriend and where she coming from. You know, we, we like, she's now becoming like me in that sense of she don't need everybody to know what's going on in her relationship long as we know what's going on i just had to say that i'm sorry i just had to say that i love i love you know i love love you know use is and just to give it a simple name i'll call it micro chopping dilla had a way of chopping where you knew that he was working with chops but he made it sound as fluid as if it was a loop if you're not too familiar with the concept of chopping in general, then the best way to explain it is to break down two of Dilla's productions where he utilized this technique. The songs are Don't Cry from his posthumous album Donuts and Black Star's song Little Brother. Really? Quest Love was able to witness Jay Dilla creating the beat for Little Brother, and I'll talk about that a little later. But right now, let's talk about Don't Cry. Don't Cry is one of my favorite tracks on Donuts, so I was happy when the channel called Vox, or Vox, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, did a dedicated video on Jay Dilla's sampling techniques and mentioned this song. There are so many songs that show Jay Dilla's ability to flip a sample, but there's one that gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. I can stand to see you cry now, baby. A lot of people think sampling is easy because they're like, oh, they're just listening to the melody on top, but they're not thinking about uh, what the instruments below that lead melody are doing and how they're playing a role in the beat. The first 40 seconds of Don't Cry is just a few long loops of the escorts I can't stand to see you cry. He barely did anything with them. He's basically saying, this is all I have to work with. At 40 seconds though, he says, now look what I can do with this NPC. Instead of chopping to the melody, he chopped up a handful of kicks and snares throughout the entire song, regardless of the melody on top of it. And like little puzzle pieces, he resequenced those kicks and snares to create this entirely new, dream-like song. Don't Cry also blew Knife Wonder's mind. Listen as he explains why this track is so special to him. Dilla mastered the art of taking a sample without stretching it, chopping it up, and playing it fast. Because if you hear in the song, there's kicks and snares in the song. So he, instead of doing like we did, what we used to, used to doing, chopping the sound, he chopped the kick and the snare and played the kick in the snare no matter what came with it, right?
I'm gonna lie, I like my boy right there. My boy in the yellow jacket. He like, he just analyzed. He just sitting there still like, I'm learning everything. Everybody like, doing that shit, they doing shit. <laughs> I ain't hating, but that, that should be funny, bro. That'd be funny. Could be those people who end up just bopping their head on everything. They don't really know what they like, but the dude like that just listen to analyze. They, they, you know what I'm saying? But that's so cool, so I ain't even <laughs> Did you notice how all Knife Wonder's fellow producers in Soul Council were doing the same hand gestures in rhythm and in unison as the track was playing? That's a producer thing. It's weird, but that's just what we do. If it's not the head nod, then we got them hands going. Mm. But anyway, now let's talk about Little Brother. No, not that Little Brother, although I love them to life too. I'm talking about the song Little Brother by Black Star. It was on the Hurricane soundtrack. You gotta hear Quest Love tell the story because he literally watched Dilla do the impossible. What he managed to do was find every microscopic period of the song that had no talking on it or singing. We got a long, long way to go. That's right. the original. A long, long, long way to go. So suddenly he takes on his on his MPC uh, three thousand on uh, twelve pads. He somehow and this is before Pro Tools. Now in Pro Tools, you can cut and paste and stuff and manipulate how you want the sound. This is before. I mean, this is this is done in like ninety nine. He just by hand. I watched him. That beat is not sampled from a loop. Those are individual chops that Jay Dilla spliced together and created a new pattern with. There's no super deep bass line and additional instrumentation from Jay himself or James Poyser because Dilla was just doing this for fun. The RappersIKnow.com website posted a blog post written by Questlove called Questlove vs. JD, The Little Brother Beat Story. In this post, Quest includes a conversation he had with Dilla right after he made the beat to Little Brother. Yo, Pete is gonna be fucked up when he hears this shit. <clears throat> Before I go on, let me just give you a little backstory on this. Pete Rock used this sample on Pete Rock and CL Smooth's 1994 album, The Main Ingredient. It was an interlude that came on after the album opener called In The House. The original sample is called Ain't Got Time by Roy Ayers Ubiquity. Equity. Google Fi, a phone plan I by Google. Swear, I Save love up to four hundred dollars when you join or add a line. With Fi, like, you'll get end-to-end -end encryption for secure calls day, between make you sound ten times Android better. phones on Fi. Plus, or more unique. Let's say that not better. It's a rather ironic song because Dilla had plenty of time. He took the time to listen to the song over and over again to pick out what parts he was going to sample. He took the time to play around with it in his MP until he got it sounding exactly how he wanted it. On second thought, it's not so ironic because the song says, ain't got time to be tired. Dilla was determined to work on this beat until he got it right. It takes tireless dedication to your craft to lead to greatness. But anyway, let's get back to their combo. Yo, Peter's gonna be fucked up when he hears this shit. No, 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 no. Nah, man, you can't let him hear this, man. I can't afford that. Afford what? This shit is a miracle. Nah, man, like, I don't want no tension. That's my idol. I don't want to give off the impression that I'm trying to outshine him. But, dog, I'm saying, if you shine, then... Nah, man. So all this shit I got with samples he's used... Yeah, man, don't let that shit get out, man. I just do it for practice. Wait. So this beat is never going to see the light of day, ever? You just made it and lost sweat over it for sport? Yeah man, I just practiced. Thank God Kwali had a cassette which had this beat on it for like 15 seconds. They looped it from the cassette and it was too late. So he shrugged it off. But man, that humility. I mean, if you really break down how he, it's, it's the equivalent, the shortest version is it's the equivalent of someone 
solving a 10,000 piece puzzle in record time. Like this sounds normal to you. And that's the thing. Like he made it sound, he made it sound fluid. He made it sound like it was an actual loop. Like you can't even hear the micro chops in it. Even though we lost this great but humble man at the young age of 32 in 2006, Dilla's legacy will never be forgotten. Also, you can learn more about Dilla from the book by Dan Charnas called Dilla Time. So for more of the adventures of Questlove and Jay Dilla, watch this video from chapter one of the book on your screen right now called When Questlove Watched Jay Dilla Make Beats for the First Time. Hey man, I'm gonna do that. I wanna say thank you back to the Boom Bat. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this made me want to like, can, can I rhyme some? If you watch this full video today, and you gonna hear me rhyme some. Um, oof, my bad. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. It goes like this. Uh, 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 uh. I fuck up like every day. I fuck up and say her name. I fuck up and I slip up. I reminisce about the other day. But a nigga's gon' be a nigga. Growing up trying to be like my big brother, smarter brother. Because I was the burden, bad news. Kid kicked out of school. I wake up nowadays and think, what do I gotta lose? Is it money to end go? Because then the family feuds and then nobody wins. I know this might flop most people's heads, but this Christmas I woke up all by myself. So I cried, but I didn't even shed a tear because now I know what my life is. Mm. Now I know my purpose on this earth really is. Sometimes I have to go to things this year. So next year I can be a new place far from here. A young Greer speaking from my heart. And this translates to a personal text. Some of these words will be laid at rest. I'm living my life at time until the rest. Peace. Sorry, y'all out. Sorry, y'all the poet.